Hello again, everybody. I'm going to um, intro for Mesfin, but he's going to start us off today just with some review from yesterday. And um, he had some, uh, some bits that he wanted to, I guess, make sure that he understood as well. But um, I'll uh, hand it off to Mesfin. <clears throat> if you'd like to share your screen, you can. Okay. Nice one. Yeah, I'm I'm coming. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, <coughs> right, erect component from scratch. Now that you have learned the basics of J6, What is this? On your React component, uh, the core building blocks of React application. So it's important to become very familiar with writing them. Remember, a typical React component is a six class, which extends React component. It has render method that returns HTML from JSX or now. This is the basic form of React component. Once you understand this well, you'll be prepared to start building more complex React projects. Okay, define a class my component that extends. Okay, let's define. And which extends extends from the component. Its render method should return div. And that contains each one that with a text this in it. Use the text exactly the case and punctuation matter. Make sure to call the constructor for your component too. Okay, I think we need a return as well. Just render this render method should return a diff that contains each one would have. Yes. Oh, hey, Jamal. Thank <laughs> you. 
<coughs> uh, we're doing some review, Jamal. Of the okay. Yeah. <coughs> Okay. <clears throat> why this render why is not? Jamal can you see what's the problem here? Yeah, yeah, you need to put a, a parenthesis on the render function. The render is a method. It's a method. Something like yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. It's a render method, so. Should read some native that contains H1. Yeah, so. This text. You, so have, you have to put the H1 inside div. Yeah. Inside? Like the H1 inside div. You have to wrap it inside div, like the div is the parent. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Something like this. Yes. Yeah, perfect. The case book choose matters. Okay, sure. Constructor of your component. Render this component to the top. Okay. React. On load. And <coughs> and and that this component to the DOM is in there is a div. Okay. Uh, so, so are we uh, put it inside or just outside here? No, inside the uh, there are two, yeah. Okay. Um, there are two. There are two things that go in these parentheses, right? Yeah. So this is the IG. Yeah. And also, you have to pass the component. My component. Yeah. Uh, before. So I think this is the first one. Yeah. And there's a special bit of formatting that you've got to do to my component. Yeah. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> okay. Hold on, I'm still working on it. So the component should be this way all the time. Okay. Yeah, but in the case of variable, yeah. you will have to put just the variable name. Is the component yeah. stored in the yeah. Okay. Okay. We're all good. Um, you don't have to use constructor. Uh, it's not mandatory. You can <laughs> because you don't have another uh, component that you are inheriting or something. Okay. Why don't we talk about real quick? We've declared a class and named it, and then we have 
to extend its React component, and any component must be rendered. We do that with the return, and then all that has to go into an HTML div. So that pretty much com covers the component there. And then yeah. down at the bottom, the way that we render it is we say React DOM, we want you to render it. The first slot is the component we created, and the second slot is how we find it in the DOM. Yeah, yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. Uh, Elliot, does that get to you? Explain that again. Okay, so um, we declare a class, my component, and then extends React component, basically says, this is a React component. Now, any component must be rendered, so on the next line of code, we render it. And the, to render it, we use the return keyword, and then we have to use HTML, and it all has to fit into one div. And then wow. anything that goes in, inside the div is the various portions of the component. Then we close all our brackets, and down at the bottom, we say, hey, React DOM, we're going to use your render method because we want to render this component. And so we use a self-closing tag on the name of the class, my component. And then in the second slot, we use document get element by ID to find the location in the DOM that we want to render it. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, that's what you know, it can happen. I may have just been that teacher who just explained something exactly the same way twice, sorry. <laughs> No, you're fine. Okay. Um, I'm still having an issue trying to get it to render. But can can I see your? Okay. Let's show it. Yeah. Sure. Let me pass this one. Then. You can share. Okay, you may have to unshare. Okay, yeah. stop it. And then I'll share mine. Okay. Okay. Like, I think on. this part is okay, right? Well, one second, let me finish that. Yeah. And then. Uh, but that, I need to fix this area. Yeah. So, right, I think. Sure. So this class my component extends React dot my component. That I um, uh, yeah. It's not from my component. I think it's from the component. Yeah, React component. <laughs> On the first are you line. Missing are you missing curly braces? Mm. Yes, he missed curly braces after after React component. You have to open one curly brace. Yeah. Ah, uh, okay. And also, yeah, and so put all the this yeah inside. Stick inside. Yeah. And also, yeah. Uh, and also, you have to put the return not in curly brace in parentheses. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think that's it. Done. Okay. Yeah. You can run it. In. Boom! <laughs> Boom. I just got to practice that more. Yeah. So I can do it without. Because the first line you are extending from the React component. Yeah, not from my the component. component. Yeah. And then it's creating an object. Yeah. Oh, this is an object. And then I'm rendering the return as an object. No, really clear. It's a method, though, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then, yeah, that's a little better. That makes more sense. Yeah. And then I'm going to clean this up. That's a little dirty. Yeah, this is a little better. I mean, it's doing the same thing, but yeah, it, re it, re it reads a lot better. 
and no space on the method the the parenthesis should be render. function name in uh, the render in the functional the space no space between the function name um, yeah. And the render, render, space. Yeah. Oh, it should be tight. Yeah, yes, it's a oh, function. Okay. Actually, when you are de developing on your own uh, uh, editor, it will help you because this is not yeah, this editor friendly. Is not <laughs> yeah. Nice. All right. Yeah, I'm just gonna one sec. Let me hop over to my other one. And then what's the name of that one? So React. Yeah, okay. C D. And then I touch uh what's today. Today the where we are, it's the 24th. Okay. Actually, it's no. not 24. 25 here. <laughs> where did oh, April go? I know, right? Went, went super fast. Okay, and then let me drop this in. Oh, I didn't get everything there. One sec. And then let me drop this in. Okay. Uh, but I have to import, right? Oh, it's a, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. okay, and then. Okay. And then let me open that. And then uh, okay. Ah, this is, this is um, challenging because you are you are doing it in an HTML way. Yeah. Let me see what I can do with this, if I can do it at all. I'll clean that up later. Uh, can I add another source? No, you have to open another script. Okay. Script. SRC. Source. And then. Yeah, reference that, yeah, and then. No, and also you have to change the ID. It needs an ID, oh, yeah, yeah, HTML. Yeah. Uh, right. You have to open a, a new div. Is this in the head there? It doesn't matter. It's, it's in the body, actually. Yeah, I need the body still. No, no, just just copy the div and then uh, make it challenge or I need this out of there. Need this in the uh, Okay. Uh, this is really messy. <laughs> I should just start a new one. Um, I should know what it is. And then. Maybe you could just beautify it.
source. Uh, uh, Did I open a tag? Oh, I didn't close. No, you should close that. You didn't close that one off. Yes, oh, then. Close it. Ah. Duh. <laughs> okay. Okay. And then uh, needs to be challenge mode. Okay. And then save it. And. Save it. And then let's go. This was not the one. I need to close it. Disposing. Let's, let's go live again. Uh, let's see. Okay. It was challenge note, right? Let's see. Mm. It's not that bad. Yeah, I think this way it shouldn't work because one, you don't have Babel that transpires your code and uh, I do though, it's here. Okay, well these things are here. Isn't this what I need? Yeah, and oh okay, you can can you can you open uh, uh Chrome uh, developer tool or not? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And inspect. Uh, yeah, just no inspect. Just the console for it. Yeah, write React here if you have it. Just React on the on the console if you write React. Okay. Enter. Okay. The React is uh, yeah. Uh, I think there is some error. Yeah, um, in, uh, in, in line number two. Yeah, of that code. So the import is the issue with my import. Yeah, we don't need that one because you have already uh, uh, attached it using CDN okay. in the HTML, so you don't need that. One. You don't need both. I don't need both? Yeah. Okay, let's see. Mm -hmm. Run it. Yeah, now it's it. seven. Oh, yeah. yeah. And seven. Yeah. Yeah, I know, I know what this means. This means that, uh, it didn't recognize this code as a React code because it didn't know the JSX syntax. So, uh, Bubble is not running. Mm -hmm. Bubble is not transforming this element to React element. So I think it's uh, the best idea is that to create uh, create React app and then run it there because the HTML has a lot of <coughs> deficiencies, a lot of errors you encounter. 
-hmm. So uh, whether you can create in the uh, code sandbox, for example. Yeah, maybe just copy the solution now here and yeah, move in code, on. Yes, yes. In code you'll have React there. And then you can I think it's, it's expecting yeah, but this yeah, is, something like this. Yeah. Oh well. Yeah, this is JSX, yes, but now it, it's not understanding because now you are sourcing the JS the JavaScript file from another file. Mm -hmm. So the bubble is not understanding. Okay. I can tell you this later. Uh, this is something that I'll just have to understand better. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's... On my own time. Okay. But I can at least pass this one. Yeah. You can just move on. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Did we want to review this one again, or? Um, you, you yes. Guys, you guys did this one yesterday, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did. Yeah, but I, I was not. I haven't done it, so. Me too. Um, do you I'm mind stuck if, uh, if I if we do this one again? Is that okay? You got, yeah. you got two more done after this. Do it. Do it. Do it. <laughs> Is that Andrew? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll do it. do it. Just do it. All right. <clears throat> All right. Pass props to a stateless functional component. The previous challenge has covered a lot about creating and composing JSX elements, functional components, and ES6 style case uh, style class components in React. With this foundation, it's time to look at another feature very common in React: props. In React, you can pass props or properties to your child components. Say you have an app component which renders a child component called welcome. That is a stateless functional component. You can pass welcome a user property by writing app welcome user equals mark. You use custom HTML attributes that React provides support for to pass the property user to the component welcome. Since welcome is a stateless functional component, it has access to this value like so. Constant welcome props hero function h1 hello props dot user close h1 it is standard to call this value props and when dealing with stateless functional components you basically consider it as an argument to a function which returns jsx you can access the value of the argument in the function body with class components you will see this is a little different <clears throat> All right, there are calendar and current date components in the code editor. <clears throat> when rendering current date from the calendar component, pass in a property of date assigned to the current date from JavaScript's date object. then access this prop in the current date component showing its value within the p tags. All right, note that for prop values to be evaluated as JavaScript, they must be enclosed in curly brackets. For instance, date equals date. All right. Uh, looks like they've already done 
into the front. So need a property update. Update is a current date. Gives a current date. We need a date. What about if you take this the last that is equal to curly base? So it should be like this date. Yeah. And then And then, and then we, we need a constructor props here. No, that's just a functional component. Okay. Date. Current date is current date. And rendering current date from the calendar component pass in a property of date. Okay. So into the calendar. Up. Oh, it's the calendar is up. Hmm. Here, the current date in the P paragraph. Yeah, you better paste, copy and paste that. Uh, date and is here, to yeah, you have yeah. to open a, a calorie press and then and then say props dot dot date. Yeah, props dot date. Yeah, that way you will get the date. Nice. Yeah. But you know, I get the same result by wait. I'll write it in the <coughs> Elite, you say that you have taken the ES six, right? Of course. Uh yes. I've studied ES six, yes. So you can use a little bit of ES six here also. All right. In here in this props dot date. Uh, is it that if you if you delete the props dot date only dates only live date? Okay. So delete this and. No, no, only the props dot date inside. Yeah. And then copy the whole, the whole, uh, the date with curly brace if you copied it. So add in if date you like we had it down there. With with the uh, no 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 just just leave it as before. <laughs> and then date date no. equals date. No 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 make it as before like date only. Okay. Yeah. No the okay. Uh, what I want to tell you that you can use this structure on this also. Like you can use. Like yeah, copy the whole with the cur with curly brace date with no no, no just date, just date yeah and copy with curly brace copy this one, copy yes with, yeah no no paragraph okay then you can put it up uh, there is props delete the props and put that one stick ah, it that one okay this is uh destructuring still works <laughs> So 
I can say date like this or no, no I, you I have, have, you have it's because that variable date is variable so you have to put it in kind of brace okay yeah it's just destructuring I don't know if you remember it <coughs> would it be more like that yeah when you have uh, ID that yes of course yeah yeah, I need to brush up on my ESX more. Good. Okay, well, we got it to pass. Did anybody yeah. else have Boom. questions there? <coughs> I'll have to review this again. It's not a... Uh... <coughs> It's not something that I really feel confident that I know what I'm doing. For the record, I felt that the instruction on this particular instructions on this particular exercise were incredibly dense and hard to understand. The guys really had to help me a lot with it too. Uh, this specific one? Yeah, the one we just finished. Oh, uh, yeah. This one's actually a lot easier. Okay. Pass an array as props. The last challenge demonstrated how to pass information from a parent component to a child component as props or properties. This challenge looks at how arrays can be passed as props. To so pass an array to a JSX element, it must be treated as JavaScript and wrapped in curly braces. To pass an array to JSX, it must be treated as JavaScript and wrapped in curly braces. Okay, so we've got a parent component with a child component and a colors attribute of an array that is green, blue, and red inside curly braces. And then it closes out and it closes the parent component. Child component then has access to the array property colors. Array methods such as join, can be used when accessing the property. Okay, const child component equals prompts arrow function p props color join. All right, this will join all colors array items into a comma separated string and produce green, blue, red. Later we will learn about other common methods to render arrays of data in React. Right, there are list and to do components, components in the code editor. All right, so list to do when rendering each list from the to-do component, <coughs> pass in a tasks property assigned to an array of to-do tasks. For example, walk, dog, workout. Okay, so here's our return. And we'll have tasks like we had the colors. All right. Okay. So the list is in there. Oh. One of the things I find a little confusing, Elliot, will you scroll down on the left side of the screen, please? Yeah. All right, so we have a list and to-do components in the code. However, we are, the list component is created with, an, with a constant, and then to-do is a class. Mm -hmm. Are they both considered components? I, I, I specifically questioning list since it is declared using an arrow function. Um, perhaps someone else would like to get in on this one, but it almost seems like they're treating them the same, but one is a class 
and one is created through a constant and an error function. I think list is most certainly a component. And to do is ex an extended React component. So they're, they're both components. List is just the child component. And to do is also a class. To do is the parent component. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, to do to do is the parent component. And then the list is the child component. Does that make more sense? And think sort of. of it in those terms. Because it's subordinate to the to do. So since to do is the parent component, is that why they've chosen to use class there and something and declare just a constant with list above. Um, yeah. Yeah, I suppose I, I don't have any you have to open a curly brace and then yeah because i've got to put it in okay open curly brace and then put an array of uh array of then like walk dog Walk yeah, you can, yeah, uh, work out. Work out. And then, and, uh, and access the task array in the list component. Showing its value uh, in the P element. So in that one, so props. You can use as before, yeah, props to tasks. Then yeah. dot join. And then you can see, uh, with the comma. Yes. And I think I break it there. And I break it. How do I unbreak it? Mm. Is DK with us? I saw that he was saying something. Uh, okay. Comma separate case. I should have at least two tasks, and tomorrow's should have at least three. Yeah. Okay. Um. What did he say? Okay, So it was working before this. Yeah, uh, try delete it. Uh, like remove it, what you did, and then. Okay. Yeah. So, and I've got walk dog. And 
So we need to say join. Let's see how they did it. Join. I think it had double quotes. Uh, what have I done? It's not working. That's exactly uh, maybe, what maybe uh, you have to finish the second post or start first. I mean, What's that? Yeah, copy that to whole and then put it in the second and edge to tomorrow's task. But you have two tasks. Yeah. Yeah, take all, yeah, and put it in the next list. Yeah. <coughs> and add, add one more task, like, okay. uh, you can say, like, um, add okay. one task. Uh, Running or something, I don't know. Workout, test, um, shopping. Yeah. Okay, so we got it to work. Why wasn't it working before then? It's so hard. Okay, never mind. Never mind. We got it to work. Hmm. All right. Anybody snagged here? Did DK join us? I didn't even go check. Uh, what is this thing got? DK did not join us. Uh, let me see what he's saying. Yes, we are in here. Okay, let's continue on. This one too. Uh, come on, thing. Okay. Come back here. Uh, uh, just <coughs> uh, uh, before you submit. Anybody have anything that was hanging them up? Everybody got this one. Uh, well, wait. The the P here. Hi. Yes. Uh, Shrikant, hello. Yeah, yeah. After a long gap. I'm glad you made it. I, I don't know if you've met all these guys. Have you? I have an issue here. Have you guys met Shrikant? No, no. After a long gap, I'm today on coming back to it. Yeah. Hey, guys, this is Shrikant. He's... Uh, Uh, much more advanced than me, uh, but uh, he's also. You're also learning React, also, right? You've gone. Yes, through, yes. Have you gone yeah, through this section? Yeah, I completed the pre code camp section. Right now, I'm doing the projects. Okay, nice. Yeah, this is Andrew, Jamal, and Mesfin. I know Mesfin. Okay. And then I think uh, Jamal is Mesfin's uh, personal friend. Okay. And then Andrew is a, a personal friend of mine. He lives in my state, in my city. 
So, uh, but uh, Srikanth and I have been studying on and off for some time now. And I met him back in January or December. Was it December? I think so. Yeah. In the first, in the first learning group. Yeah. But uh, Srikanth is from uh, India, from Southeast India, and in state called Telangana. Yeah. He's in Hyderabad, Telangana. So but, you guys uh, are doing React now? Yeah, we've been doing React. Um, <laughs> How is it so far? Uh, we're pretty bad at it, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, Jamal seems to have gotten a good handle on it. But uh, the rest of us were kind of shaky. But, uh, yeah, we're, I mean, we're, we're giving it a go. I think, I think we'll need to study a lot more there, for sure, and get more practical experience doing some projects. Okay, that's fine. Uh, okay. I'll, post the, I'll, I'll post the recording, Andrew. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll uh, check in with you later. Okay, definitely. Okay. But I'll definitely yeah, see the recording after to see yeah, how further we get. Yeah, I will watch those recordings in my free time. Yes, you guys just continue. I will. Okay. Nice one. Did you have uh, you had a question at this point? No, no. I'm okay now. You got it fixed? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, for whatever reason, it wasn't working for me. And then it just kept working. Uh, okay, let's run it. Move to the next one. And then uh, we're at use default props. React also has an option to set default props. You can assign default props to a component as a property on the component itself, and React assigns the default props prop if necessary. <clears throat> this allows you to specify what a prop value should be if no value is explicitly provided. For example, if you declare my component dot default props equals location San Francisco, you have defined a location prop that sets that's set to the string San Francisco unless you specify otherwise. React assigns default props if props are undefined. But if, you're pa if you pass null as the value for a prop, it will remain null. The code editor shows a shopping cart component. Define default <laughs> props on this component, which specify a prop items with a value of zero. Okay, so we need to say like. Okay. Yeah, right there. My component. No, no, no. Your component name. Ah, yeah, you're right, you're right. So <laughs> shopping cart. Uh, who is this? Uh, we didn't know. Uh, Shrikant? Yeah, 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 I have. I just heard of him. His name. Yeah, Shrikant is. Uh, he he's been studying with me on and off. Uh, in uh, more in the JavaScript time. Okay. Yeah. I think uh, he met Mesfin, but I don't think uh, uh, you met Jamal. So. Yeah, yeah. But uh, nice. Srikanth is the one that uh, he's the master branch of the repo for the JavaScript study. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. That's great. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Um okay now I need to so, dot default default props capital P equals yeah. and then I need to do this In location uh, uh, items sure. zero okay 
I think this will pass now, right? Yes. Uh, why we don't use this time? This the angle bracket for the component, the shopping cart. Pardon? That is just a text. That is just a text. If you want to insert some <coughs> JavaScript value, we use that angular bracket. Okay. Here, yeah. the shopping cart is just a text. If you want to yeah. insert some variable or property value, we use that bracket braces. Mm -hmm. <coughs> you can add that item props props dot item in that h1 and see how it oh uh, like if i say items no 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 no, no. in that uh, after that h1 open that curly braces and display that props dot items you have property props dot item in the default props right items you have uh, items in default props. Just yeah. render that items in that H1 tag. You will see. After that shopping cart component, open some curly braces, two curly braces, and inside that props dot items. Oh, yeah. here. Okay. Yeah. Curly braces. Yeah. Props dot items. Okay. We use curly braces to render JavaScript values. Mm. Mm -hmm. Variables or props or state anything. That is in JSX syntax. It is in JSX. <coughs> yeah. Combining yeah. the HTML and JavaScript together. Um, we got... Uh, I'm spelling bot. Bot. Uh, props. Items. Uh, all right. Yeah. And then. Okay. I won't mess with it anymore. I wonder if it will say I can't do that. Oh, and let me do it. Okay. Let me swipe this. Okay. Okay. This is, what is this? This was attributes. the next one uh, override default props the ability, the ability to set default props is a useful feature in react the way to override the default props is to explicitly set the prop values for a component the shopping cart component now renders a child component items this items component has a default prop quantity set to the integer zero Override the default prop by passing in a value of 10 for quantity. Note, remember that the syntax to add a prop to a component looks similar to how you add HTML attributes. However, since the value for quantity is an integer, it won't go in quotes 
but it should be wrapped in curly braces. For example, curly brace 100, curly brace. This syntax tells JSX to interpret the value within the braces directly in JavaScript. And Quantity. Ten. Is that right? Yeah. So that's all I need to do. Yeah. So you override it in the default props. Mm -hmm. <coughs> okay. Overriding the default charge. And I save this. I saved that. Overriding the default props. Okay. Uh, that was the, actually the wrong thing. <laughs> I just did the wrong thing. I'll have to go back to that JS study trick. I messed that one up. All right. Okay. So let me pass this one. Okay. Did anybody have any questions on that one? Sorry, I forgot to ask. No, I'm shook. Now we're on use prop types to define the props you expect. Everybody ready for this one? All right. React provides useful type checking features to verify that components receive props of the correct type. For example, your application makes an API call to retrieve data that you expect it to be in an, in an array, which is then passed to a component as a prop. You can set prop types on your component to require the data to be of type array. This will throw a useful warning when the data is of any other type. It's considered best practices to set prop types when you know the type of a prop ahead of time. You can define a prop types property for a component in the same way you define default props. Doing this will check that props of a given key are present with a given type. Here's an example to require the type of function uh, for a prop called hand click, handle click. My component dot prop types equals curly brace handle click colon prop types dot func dot is required. Curly brace. In the examples above, the prop types dot func part checks that handle click is a function. Adding is required tells React that handle click is a required property for that component. You will see a warning if that prop isn't provided. Also notice that func represents function. Among the seven JavaScript primitive types, function and boolean, written as bool, are the only two that use unusual spelling. In addition to the primitive types, there are other types available. For example, you can check that a prop is a React element. 
please refer to the documentation for all of the options. Note, as of React v15.5.0, prop types is imported independently from React, like import React, comma, prop types from React. Define prop types for the items component to require quantity as a prop and verify that it's of type number. Okay. My component. Okay, so the component <laughs> Should be shopping cart. Hello, Hello. TK. TK, what's up, bro? Yeah, I'm good. Sorry, I'm late for the class. That's okay, man. We uh, we we found our long lost free time. <laughs> he he's joined us. And uh, Mesfin and Jamal are here. And, well, Jamal, what's up now? And uh, Andrew was with yeah. us earlier, but he had this one. <laughs> How are you? I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> Does anybody else want to share screens and give this one a try? I've been uh, having this. Since I just joined, should I give it a shot? Sure. Okay. Uh, I'm going to be giving it a shot. Uh, but we just read through that. Uh, feel free to read through it if you need to. Uh, card. Okay, uh, let me... Um... Wait, can you point out which one it is? What is it, like the name of that particular? Oh, uh, it's uh, use prop types to define the prop types you expect. You use this this one, okay, to define it. Okay, okay, this right? Correct. Okay, let me quickly read through of the area to very useful type checking features to verify the prompt or whatever the component. Again, a company is different of type. For example, your application makes an API call to retrieve data that it's said to be an array and pass to a company that supports You can set your type on your company to require the data from the type array. This will show a useful one when it requires any other type. It is considered the first step. This part is set for type when you know the type of the and the and define the first type of the code. So, the company in the same way with the same code. But doing this, we check the code for the given key present within the given type. So, here's an example of the file. So, here's an example of the file and the type of the code. The command of code type is. Okay, define prop type for the item. The item component require quantity as the prop require that is a number. Hi, 
He's got it. All right. Well, this is the uh, I think I think you got it. Check to see if it's right. Yeah, All right. Okay. Everybody Ooh. got it to this point. Did everybody give it a try? So if you um, increase the default this thing here to like five, increase on the square. Uh, DK, your volume is a little low. Just oh, ascend okay. some string to it and see what happens. <laughs> what what you say? In place of zero, ascend some string there for quantity and let's see what happens. I, I didn't get what you said. He's saying, uh, make make the quantity a string. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Uh, ah. We still accept it. We shouldn't. So it does accept my. Uh, like I just said, I typed out six, and it and it accepted. Okay, okay. This one says the prop that. Okay. An example of the prop that I check. You go ahead and tell me that I need to do the required property for the component. Oh, okay, okay, okay. You no, know, we don't. Uh, that's the default probe. So we need to change. I think we need to pass in it as probe, like um, um, quantity. Into then when we uh, pass, we can, we can um, let's say we add. Um, if I add oh, no, no, that, yeah, that's the default probe. Yeah, we had to change the other one. So what, I think it's still but giving. It's still, it's still working now. That's yeah. Still working. But if you tell it to be a string, it'll still work. <laughs> That's messed up. <laughs> it shouldn't be doing that, right? I I think so. Maybe you can check, uh, look, look, look up like uh, more details on uh, how, how to use prospect and all of that. Yeah, can you? Where where did you get that? Uh, the boilerplate. The I think. I'm I didn't I, get the uh, starter code. Let me check if I can see something on um, props, like in the um, documentation, on on prop types in documentation. Type checking with prop types, the below one. The, this one? In that, in that one only, advanced guides, the last one. Just oh, like, this. No, 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 open that advanced guides. And open advanced. which one? Advanced. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Advanced. yeah that was one I was looking through. Yeah, the bottom one, after strict mode, there is type checking with prop types. Type no, checking no, with prop types under strict mode. Yeah. Oh, oh okay, okay. It's an alphabetical. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> type checking with prop types. No, we have the prop. Read, read that note once. You read that once? Uh, read that note. It's saying that. Okay, we have the prop types. I've moved into different um, packages. We have the system type. This is the easiest the uh, prop that we have instead. In the recent version of React, we have to install prop types using npm. 
I think it was it. So, um, he's saying you have to install prop types by npm. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Well, I well, for us to be able to use it on um on Frigo, I must have installed it underneath now. So like oh. the old like um, we're trying to like um walk away three years since we are setting the prop type to be a number, then you shouldn't accept. Should not accept um, um, anything other than a number. I think they will do like. Should not be accepting any proof other than a number. They want it. Of drug types number required. Uh, you want to make it a string? Yeah, we'll try to test. So you can just call a string wrapper, capital S, string. Yeah, I'm sorry, can you come again? You can call the string object wrapper, like string, capital S, string, and then uh, pass like 100, for example. 100. Yeah, then it will stringify it. Like, no, no, 100, like 100. Like number, any number you like, 10. Oh, I don't say Android. <laughs> Still, like, is, this, is this, why, why do we need to set, like, um, this part if you still yeah. need to accept the number? Yeah, because th there is no uh, a console or something that you can see that it's throwing an error. You cannot see it. Oh, oh, oh no, yes, the <laughs> Okay. Yeah. So it should tell you that the string should be. You know, but it's not really an error for because this thing is more like um, he actually the um uh, this um, the frequent kind of editor actually runs after every yeah. every every key you type. So there will be an error. There will always be an error. So all these errors are not related to what what we're working on. All these errors that are showing here are not related to what we're working on. A lot more of you not finish when you are not done typing. And it's actually running the code, and so obviously it'll be an error. You can see this, this string is not spelled completely yet. Like, yeah. So all the errors are not related to what we're working on. Yeah, but if you just take it to your local where you have React, then it will. Okay, let me. Uh, yeah, okay, okay, good. Let me, let me move it.
Well, I, I, I've not installed um, um, prototype, but I'm, since I'm using it with this thing, it should work. I'm using it with the CDN. And so prototype is not defined. So, so what do I need? To, I'm using it with this. Um, okay. uh, uh, you cannot use the NPM because you are using. Uh, since, since I'm, using I'm using CDN, so I don't think I can use. Basket. Let me see if I can use React dot. Since I'm using, I'm calling the uh, this thing. Okay, okay, I think that part is working now. It's going to um number is not defined. Yeah. I know read property number is not defined. Well, number of undefined. Yeah, step up. So we have the proof that number is required. Uh, okay. I think it's still on this line, still on this, on this part of the code. Okay, should I move this to? Prop pipes is not different. Means you need to add that package. Prop pipes package. I didn't know. Well, um, sorry. What did you say? Install prop pipes. No, I think I should use it with. I should use it in this create React app like that. Um, you get what I'm trying to say. When you know when you you can use this tool to uh, create from like you install from npm. Yeah. Create create React app. We can use that environment instead and see if it works. Okay. Yeah, I think I created this somewhere. Once, show me your code once. I think, what is it? Yeah, show your code. Okay, okay. Yeah, well, we need to import prop type somewhere. Yeah. And yeah, we need okay, okay. I think we should use the create React app um an environment as in the integrated two chain environment. Okay, I think I, I created it somewhere. Just give me a minute. Let me just 
create um, the whole thing again. Um, Try to see if I can work with it um, from this, this thing. So I think I need to install props um, as a discipline also here. Yeah. Just one, show your code later. Thank you. Yes, this is not correct. Very importantly, from prof. So, how to import prof? Oh, I think okay. We have comes an end is an npm module, so we need to install it separately. Thank you. 
How's it coming, DK? Yeah, I'm trying to install, like, create the integrated environment so we can test it. With, uh, okay, yeah. okay. So. Once show your code, then we will guide you. Okay. I'm, I'm moving this part to. I have to make some changes when I have to. Yeah, I was working on my JS file in uh, VS Code. So you're trying to use NPM to get the prototypes? Not really. I'm. I just. Uh, I'm using npm to install an environment where we can actually uh, code React. Uh, where we can actually write that directly. Something like um, 
So I'm just I'm just trying to like I need to delete all of this. Yeah. You're just trying to get this to work in your VS Code. Yeah, no, apart from that, like obviously I'm working with I'm, I'm trying to like because you need to install install prototypes, like you need to install it. Or I think yeah, yeah, you can already install the the um, environment, but I'm just trying to um remove like this part of the this thing. Oh, uh, Jamal had to leave. Uh, that's fun to do too, I think. This one's still there, but yeah, I'm here. Yeah, I'm here. Hey, DK, why don't we try to move on and uh, get back to the challenges? Okay. And then maybe after the recording, we can talk about this still. Okay. No Is that okay? Yeah, no problem. I think there's some kind of echo on your side too. Oh. Maybe, maybe um, make sure your headphones are on. I think they might go away. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Should I go on? This is a new challenge. Yeah, there's a pretty bad echo. I'm not sure what what's causing that, but oh, can you hear me well now? Yeah, we we hear a pretty significant echo. Wait, okay, maybe someone else because I think it's my name. Maybe someone else should take over. Like, okay, I, I can uh, I can read through this one. Okay, okay, access props using the store props. Shrikant, you want to read this one? Yeah, continue. Go, go ahead. After that, I will show that how to install the prop types, and I'll show that in okay. React setup. Uh, okay, access props using this dot props. The last several challenges covered the basic ways to pass props to child components. One minute. I'm going to mute you, DK. Yeah, let's see. Did that go away? It might be coming from your side, Trikant. Let me see. Hello? Yeah, I think there was. Hello? Hello? Oh, I can hear you. Yeah, okay. I think uh, it was coming from Trikant. So I muted Trikant and it went away. But uh, if you need to talk Trikant, uh, uh, probably just say say what you need to say and then probably mute yourself. Okay, so... Oh. All right, I'm going to read this one. Uh, it's, okay. uh, all right. The last several challenges covered the basic ways to pass props to child components. But what if the child component that you're passing a prop to is an ES6 class component rather than a stateless functional component? The ES6 class component uses a slightly different convention to access props. Anytime you refer to a class component within itself, you use the this component, or this keyword, to access props within a class component. You preface the, the code that you use to access it with this. For example, if an ES6 component, class component, as a prop called data, you write this dot props dot data within a curly brace in JSX. Render an instance of the return temp password component in the parent component. Reset password here. Give 
return temp password a prop of temp password and assign it a value of a string that is at least eight characters long within the child. Then the child return temp password, access the temp password prop within the strong tags to make sure the user sees the temporary password. Hello? Hello? Welcome. Uh, I'm not sure. I think we lost connection there for a moment. Oh, thank you. Uh, I don't know why that would have happened. I have full coverage. I don't know what would have caused that, but I'm going to share again. Thank you. And I was just reading the prompt. Uh, if I try to read the question, like the question, so I think that was where you were right before the uh, full loss connection. Oh, this part? Yes. Yeah, render an instance of the return temp password, password components in the parent component. Reset password here, give return temp password a prop of temp password and assign it a value of a string that is at least eight characters long. Within the child, return temp password, access the temp password prop within the strong tags to make sure the user sees the temporary password. Okay. Okay. So you have to render the the child com the child component which is return temp within the parent component which is reset password. So you have to move down the put it the first. Enter an instance. You render it. Okay. An instance of it. Yeah. Just render it with, with, between the comments. Okay. An instance of, of there's a child component called return ten password at the top. Okay. Parent component. Then you give it the prop of um ten pa ten password. After you rent like when you know within the you know when you want to give it you know how when you want to like assign a prop to a to to a, to a component, mm -hmm. you want to when you want to pass in a prop to a component from the from the uh, parent um, component, then you need to like add it within the um, um, angle bracket. Like you just add the name of the prop, then the value. Yeah, okay. So it's temp password temp temp. There's no T P. Just T M P. Yeah, good. Assign the value of a string that is at least okay. You assign the value of a string that is at least eight characters. As in a string, you put it. You put. It, I think you should put it within the curly braces. Since it's JavaScript, you want it to. Uh, so you want it to like um, the JavaScript. Then assign a string of, of at least eight characters. Okay, so we need to use the props and props. Yeah, no, no, no. We don't. We are just assigning a prop to a child component from the parent component. So we just need to assign a string of, of at least eight characters to this part, like to the yeah, good. Just assign it. Like just write add, add at least eight strings there. Just type anything and make it at least eight characters. Um, password. That's it already. Or how do you say this? Change me. Wow. Okay. Okay. So within the chart code, with company, it access the temp password prop within the strong tag. So you have to go back and access this prop you're passing in here within the chart component. So within the um, strong tag, so you need to access this within the strong tag. Okay. So, yeah, we need it between good. So to access it, yeah, like this is JavaScript, then you put the curly braces first. Yeah. So now what the um, module is saying is that 
Um, when you want to assess a probe, a good, good. Uh, and the name you gave the probe there. Voila. Ah, nice. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So if you, if you are going to try to, if you are going to do, if, if the child component was um, a functional component or an ES6 um, class component, you will need to use this. You just the props dot the name of the prop of the property. This time, perhaps. Okay. Okay. I don't think that's going to work on there. But in here. All right, let's move to the next one. Okay. Shrikant, you still with us? You said you wanted to show us something. Yeah, go ahead. After that session, I will show them. Okay. Um, yeah, let's just try to do one or two more. Um, let's see where we are. Okay, sort of like maybe like um, closer closer to halfway. Okay. React review using props with stateless functional components. Except for the last challenge, you've been passing props to stateless functional components. These components act like pure functions. They accept props as input and return the same view every time they are past the same props. You may be wondering what state is and the next challenge will cover it in more detail. Before that, here's a review of the terminology for components. A stateless functional component is an action you write which accepts props and returns JSX. A stateless component, on the other hand, is, an, is a class that extends react.component but does not use internal state covered in the next challenge. Finally, a stateful component is any component that does, that does maintain its own internal state. You may see stateful components referred to simply as components or react components. A common pattern is to try to minimize or minimize stateful and to create stateless functional components wherever possible. This helps contain your state management to a specific area of your application. In return, this improves development and maintenance of your app by making it easier to follow how changes to state affect its behavior. The code editor has a campsite component that renders a camper component as a child. Define the camper component and assign it default props of name camper bot. Inside the camper component, render any code that you want, but put but make sure to have one p element that includes only the name value that is passed in, in as a prop. Finally, define prop types on the camper component. Define prop types on the camper component to require name to be provided as a prop and verify that it is of type string. Okay, so this is kind of putting most of everything that we've learned yeah, something like that. So far yeah, today. Yeah, so we are adding a default probe, not, a, not just a default probe to the 
Um, the defining control component assign uh, assign it. Okay. Um, you could also have the component as a child. Define the camper component and assign it. To so you need to define inside the camper component. Render. You need to define the camper component again yourself. So you need to define camper component yourself inside the camper component. Render any code that you want. Make sure you to have the one parent type using the only name value. Uh, no, they are declaring it like you are creating a, a, a compound component yourself, like you're creating it from scratch. So you either use a function, a, a, a class component, a class component, a functional, any which one you think mm. is best for you. Just write a function component. Just use a function Just component. const yeah camper now we are equals to after camper There should be an equals after camper. So you are, oh, yeah. you are assigning the function to the yeah. Um, variable. Yeah. Okay. And then name. No, you, you, okay. Camper, but. You define the component and assign it a prop. So. No, no, no. You are assigning yes, a different written. prop. You are assigning a Inside different written. prop. We don't need JS Express. This, this should be. This should be. Write a return statement. Write a return. No, Elliot. Yeah, that is a component. We write that default drops after that. Inside return, now write the some HTML. Yes, right. JS no HTML. Yeah, different. Yeah. yeah. Different. Return. Yeah. Um, you have to return the paragraph tag. Div. Okay, Dave. Uh, it's not gonna do that. Div tag. Yes. Yeah, it's not gonna <laughs> build it out for me. Div. Okay, and then and the paragraph, as is the paragraph, then you can now add any other thing you want. The paragraph that okay, takes in the, um, the, the name prop you, the default name prop you assigned. There, use the prop how do you, name. How do you assess the default, the, a, a, like a prop in your, in a functional component? The props, how do you assess it? Props. I think it's prop, and uh, again, Mention it in the. No, you, you the let him have function. It's props. It's props. No props. It's props. Okay. Yeah, I think it is props. Actually. After that, then you need to like um, um assign a default prop to the to the um um, um to the functional distance. You need to assign a default prop to it. Within this or within somewhere else. No, you just have to. You know, just, you just what I would advise to do is um, just uh, just try to copy that part. You um, or just copy it within and go go back to, like to the previous code and check how you how you can assign a default prop to a component. Then come back and do that here. You get to just copy everything you because if you go back, you might not you might clear out. So you don't have to type everything again. Just co just copy it in your clipboard. Just um, focus on everything and um, you'll use your command dot C to copy it. So you can always paste it back when you come back. Okay. Yeah. yeah. This might actually clear out before you come back. So you need to type everything again. You're missing your you're missing one. But anyway, just go check how you declare a default 
default component. In default prop, sorry. In the component. I think yes. it was about yes. two modules ago. Where is your camper functional component? It's here. Yes, it's here. You just we like okay, just copy it and don't delete it yeah. and go back go back to like the previous modules no. and see. Move that out uh, okay. Move that out of that camp set. Yeah, just paste it here. So when you go back, you can always copy it back and forth. Uh, campsite. Or I could just open up a uh, new Africa camp. Oh, yeah. Okay, so you can uh, you can open an Africa camp to check. So you can check about I think about two modules ago. Africa can rocks. Uh, let's do yeah, let's go down. Yeah, let's go to the curriculum. Uh, let's take me the forum. Oh, front end libraries, front end libraries. Okay. Okay, so um, default, I uh, use use default prop. I think that should be it. So you uh, maybe you can go through how you can how you can declare it default. We can see it there. So then go. You can see how you declare it. Uh, yeah, my component. Now you can just oh, use it. Props. Okay. Yeah. Equals. Okay. The component name dot default props uh, equals to. Okay. I still went there, so we didn't. Uh, so we have to check if it's where we are going to place it. We have to check where we are going to place it. Camper. Let's see. Camper default. Perhaps equals. Then that yeah. should be uh, an object. Yeah, good. And then, um, it's you assigned it a name. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the name of the assistant. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, but you have to. So it's supposed to be a string since you asked. You are assigning a name to it. Yeah, it's a string. So it's a string. Okay, okay. So why is it not string? Okay, I think it where you placed it is I think it's not right. You have to confirm that. Go back to um uh, just I think the, but just go back stop guessing up, but just go back to like the <laughs> your guess so just leave it. Just go and confirm. So you have to like go back and forth. Okay, I don't okay. Can you go back to like the list, like the module list for Okay, let's see. Um, no, I did default prop. Use default prop. Use prop type to define pass an array to. Okay, my company too. Because don't I need to tell it? So it should be. I think it should be after the component, not before. Like the default prop declaration. Okay. It should be after the. I think it should be after the. Component like after the component you are assigning different props to, so it should be after camper, not before camper. This, yes. So after, like after, like the, the old declaration of camper. 
I don't think it's right. Okay, go box. <laughs> okay, so let's see. The item is okay. there. Because the first, the first project is dictated after what the like, within. It's not, it's not within like the uh, function, the, the component. It's after the component. Right? Mm hmm. But it's so, within the. Uh, I think we need to tell it props. Oh, you didn't pass in props. Oh, yeah. you need to pass in props. Yeah, you need to since we are assessing. I think, I think it has to access it. Yeah, that's yeah, assessing it. So you have to pass it in. Wow, it's working now. <laughs> you can see it's camper bot. Yeah. Like you are assigned, so you can change the name and see. Oh man, I did a yes six. Wow. <laughs> I understood that. Though. Wow. Okay. Finally, define prop types on the camper component. To require component. name. Okay, you just need to like um um, like, um assign a particular type a pro prop type to. So you have, go back and forth again, like do the same. Go back to the previous this Yeah, because you have to do this thing. How you assign? Pro yeah, this is what you're doing. So you can just copy it and edit it, or you want to type it out yourself. Just try to yeah, know the format I'll type, and type it out yourself. Okay, I, I think that one is within. Check where you are going to write it. Okay, no problem. Just type it out first. You can always move it. Um, it's prop types. Yeah, prop types. Prop types equals. Equals. And then the name of the name property equals. name. Oh, it's doing that unstable thing again. Yeah, it's just because it actually provides uh, good after every change. So it should be string dot prop type dot prop type strings is required. Yes. So no 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 it's 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 an object so you can add a comma there not a semicolon. Okay, so now check where you're going to place it. I think where you place it is wrong. Yeah, check it like sometimes on the camper component. So it should be No once run the test. It should be before the return statement, I think. Yeah, you are you are correct. Oh, it's correct. Oh. Test. Okay. Who oh, is correct? Okay. <laughs> So you just to to okay now to declare a default prop type and um, assign a um, to declare a game property and assign a property type. You do it after the yeah, component. This is default, but then yeah, default property. Uh, and if I say type name, if you are doing that, you, 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 you pass it. Yeah, you can change it from there. Yeah, you can change it from there. You can change it from there. Yeah, I'm just, really. I'm just trying to mess with it then. He's trying to change okay. the default okay. prop. So okay. You can see what you okay. had them to that you need that text yeah, yeah. Need. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. But so if he's I, changing the default property. If I say nothing there. It's yeah. an empty string, so if you just change it to an empty string. And then it will do this. It will do camper bot. But if I so give it a name, then it will have a name. Okay. Sweet. Nice. That was fun. <laughs> I'm beginning to understand this more. Yeah, the, the more you type it, the more you work on stuff. Like before, I'm sure before you complete like the uh, the old React um this thing, you should be able to understand it better. Then when you go through the, uh, the I need to go to the ES six again. Apart from that, when you go to like to react to understand React better, you need, when you after you finish like the React part of crypto, time, you can go through the documentation also. Then if you go through both of yeah. them, at least you have, you have a better understanding of like basics. Then you can always like look for more materials to actually make you better. But the documentation should be enough to take you to a level. And when you work on projects, then you get your proficiency will increase and all of that. Yeah.
I think you're right. I just need more practice. Yeah, you just need to type it more and try to like um, have it stick to your head, like the structure of the whole thing. Then you can always add your own finesse to it when you're much better at it. So when you work, when you work with states now, you understand how you can work with props and states and mix everything together. Try to like manipulate. When anybody says state, though, I still get confused. No, state is just more of you assigning um you are you are assigning um values to a particular company. Okay, um, that you are translating a value to a component. So those values you so always state. Change, you cannot, State is just assigning. Hey, assigning. Uh, to that component. Uh, to the component. Yeah, like a, it's just zeroing in on that camper component and saying that it has a default and it has a uh, a required type. So state to help you understand you that you can always when you understand them better then you can always use them. Um, interchangeably, not interchangeably, sorry, you use them with like you can mix to delegate your field. Um, uh, and you, you, when you comes also, you get a better standing of the other. Yeah, when you, when you work with forms, that's when you know how, how much, like, how, uh, how important states are. Yeah, I, I I don't know. I think I just probably need to do more reading so that I can yeah, say, yeah. You say these like, kind of, like okay. say these kind of things in my own words, you know? Yeah, hey, obviously. Because like I'm not I'm not really at that point where I think I have an understanding of what it even means to have a stateful or stateless functional component. No, they haven't, they haven't touched that yet. So yeah, yeah, on the right, they haven't touched that yet. They haven't touched states and stateless. What we what we working on are stateless, like on on the whole um, this thing right now, are stateless. So they are still going to like introduce it and show you. Hey, now you're, you're, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is the, this is the one that's going to be on state. Yes. Because whenever they All talk the about form. state, it's like it's like, what are they even talking about? <laughs> you haven't you have you haven't gotten there yet, so now you're there. Yeah. You understand what they're trying to say better. Yeah. Okay. And the funny thing is you can always assign states to uh to a class component. Okay. You can assign it to a functional component. I mean okay. that's that's what, that's my understanding that I don't know, Shall I might confirm it, but I don't think you can assign assign state to a function functional component. You only assign state to a the class component within the constructor. Okay, I think that's what this one's going to be about. Yes. All right, so I'm going to read it. Um, <clears throat> create a stateful component. One of the most important topics in React is state. State consists of any data your application needs to know about that can change over time. You want your apps to respond to state changes and present an updated UI when necessary. React offers a nice solution for the state management of modern web applications. You create state in a React component by declaring a state property on the component class in its structure. This initializes component with state when it is created the state property must be set to a JavaScript object declaring it looks like this this dot state equals curly brace and just to comment it out description earlier did you see what um, 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 what do you see uh, what um, um, Sri, Sri Khan you can said in the chat. Um, just now. Yeah, just check it. At least you just differentiated um states 
and uh, I think broke. I think my group chat reset. You may have to do it again. Let me paste the, his, um, his text again. I'll just okay. Yeah, I think my my chat had reset. Oh, I think you shared it in the private. Oh, let me. I, I, I put it in every in every. Okay, good. Okay, okay now it's, it's similar to props, but it is private and fully controlled by the component. Exactly, and you can. There's a okay. there's a certain way you can change state. Also, you can't just change state by assigning to a different value. You try an error. After you, you have to use a function like the set state function. I can change the state of. I can only change it within the component, not outside the component. So you can go ahead. But it seems like state is often. Uh, it's often working with the. It's working with the component. But it's require it's placing requirements on the on the properties. No, no, it's not replacing the properties. You can you can still assign properties to um a a, a company that has states. You can still assign, so it doesn't um. We can just use them. We can use them together in a certain way to help your uh to help fulfill your desires and all of that, chap. Yeah. Okay. Let me read the rest. State recipe. changes. Yeah. If values of state changes, automatically re renders the component. React re renders it if state value changes to something. Okay. So it react to changes. Okay. So it's basically the core of what React like. Yeah. If it's changing. It changes. Class components can have the state, and functional components have no option to define state. Okay. Only class components. Only hold the, the state. object, because the object will, like they were saying, like it holds the data. Yeah, within the we define the state in constructor. Yeah. So the the data within the object is going to change based on what what the user puts into it. Yeah, user interacts, yeah. I think you'll understand the difference once you complete this. Challenge. Yeah. You have access to the state object throughout the life of your component. You can update it, render it in your UI, and pass it as props to child components. The state object can be as complex or as simple as you need it to be. Note that you must create a class component by extending react.component in order to create state like this. Okay, so that's class state. You can component. pass state data as prop to child components. Initialize state here, okay. Okay, there is a component in the code editor that is trying to render a name property from its state. However, there is no state yes. defined. Initialize yeah. the component the state. State in the constructor and assign your name to a property of name. Okay. This does state. Okay. So just create an object this dot state object this dot state equals and then name what's your name make oh. it a string and don't mm -hmm. put that semicolon yeah i don't need that So the state hmm. 
it is similar to prop but props are coming from parent component to child right we are passing that prop value from parent to child right <laughs> yeah how we are getting the props we are passing from somewhere to some other component right right in the in the previous example we passed that prop from default default props we are okay. passing some value from parent component to child so we can access that prop in the child right we are passing that prop value from parent to child so we are getting that prop value from some, some other component here state is internal to this particular component okay i think and i think i uh, get it a little better now but just uh, imagine how we used the props in previous exams we passed the value of prop from one component to other from yeah. parent component to child we pass that prop value here we are creating the state within that component so it is internal to that component i think i've seen something like this where uh, the context dictated where the state would change based on the context yes and if you want to pass this state to some other component in the down you can pass the state data as prop in that component for that you can have that name equal to this dot state dot name so it can pass that state value as a prop to some other component okay and if this value changes the automatically child will re-render it if the value in the state uh, parent component changes in state the child will automatically re-render it you will understand okay. it once you try to use it in some application or in an example like in sample application yeah this is like baby step the only difference is prop is coming from some other component and state is internal to that particular component state for yeah he, now you can check that code in this previous example how we are passing prop values yeah cuz we passed the prop here we haven't passed anything but we are using default name but we can pass that value here the camper from there if you pass some value the value to name it will become the prop in that camper component right if you pass some value from that name equals something in that render yeah that camper that will become prop here in the camper component so we are passing that value from other component to some child component we are getting this prop values from its parent where we use that the camper in render yeah there we can create some name equal to some curly brace some name or something like that so we are passing prop from parent to child here the state is completely internal to that particular component okay we create the state within that component here we are getting that name from above parent component yeah. of course we are using default here there is no name so we are getting default but we can pass that name from that the parent component. camper but yeah just pass some value from the okay just understand that logic we are passing the value from parent to child yeah from the, the method param yeah here in the render we have we are rendering camper component right hello good morning there we can pass the... good morning this way mm -hmm. okay no problem when you uh, yeah, please call me yeah this one thank you it's not using a function necessarily yeah yeah uh, guys i'll be i'll be like oh um, i have to go out now you have to go i have to go out now like so i, I can still be over like this okay. uh, I will, but when i'm going i will let you guys know
Yeah, I think I think this is probably good. Um, it's like one ten a.m. for me right now. So yeah, it's seven a.m. Yes, yeah, so I have to like I have some things to like um get yeah. on with. Let's uh, no let's call it a day and we. I'm still listening to you guys. I'm, I want to change up. Like I want to dress up. Like I'm still listening to you guys. Think. Yeah, I, I think that this is gonna be it. Um, the last. Let's uh let's call it a day. And let's say we ended on. Uh, oh, well. and, okay. 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 Let's. Uh, yeah. If you want, I'll quickly show it on my editor how I the prop and state. Okay. Yeah, quickly. Uh, I'll uh, stop sharing and then I'll let you share with us. Yeah, I think I just need to see more of this, you know. Is it clear to you? Yeah. Yeah, one sec. Let me... Uh, let me push this to my. Are you able to see my screen? Yeah, I was. Uh, okay. One sec. Let me save my okay. work. Okay, just go ahead. After completing that, let me know. I will show. Okay, I'm ready now. Okay. I'll just watch your screen. Okay. Okay. So, actually, we are using prop types in our examples, right? Uh huh. To use prop types in in our real code, we need to install the prop types package. Here you can see npm install show prop types. So we first install the prop types package in our regular code base. In free code camp, they have set up everything, but yeah. for our local code, we need to install the package. So I will I'm installing the prop types now. Oh, okay, you're installing the prop types. I was even thinking of trying to find a way to actually install it with uh um install it with the create react create react app. But I think you install no, no, no. it though. You need to install through npm. Once you have the create react app set up, then you can install using your terminal npm. Yeah, I know, I know. That's good. Yeah. So no, is this the integrated time. environment and um, the two um, integrated yeah. environment? Once, or once you install, then you have to import it to here. Okay. Import. Prop, prop, prop type. Here, if you notice that a capital P, yeah. prop types. Then my system is responding slow. Yeah, it's types, yeah. Then small yeah. letter prop. I think this is like this so prop. Case. It is taking too long to respond. This is a package name, prop hyphen types. Send they we can use it like some items dot prop types in our application like this. Yeah, yeah, then should be able to. But does this actually <clears throat> when you set the, uh, the um, data type for the for the prop type for the property, does this actually accept any other data type apart from that? Oh, uh, okay. Dot string of num number that is required. Yeah. But it is for the property type well, it should be T Y P E. Like you just uh, um. Click on 
Yeah. Now yeah. You need to know the property types um, correctly. CYP again. You're missing an E here. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can check your. Actually, my system is hanging a bit, not responding. Yeah. So is there an error when you assign another, like a different data type to it? Because that's that's what I'm trying to go. You should try. Uh, it will, it will show that error. Types to it. Yeah, it will definitely show an error if we assign something other than number. It's a turn error, right? But it's taking some time. Yeah, it returns an error, definitely. Yeah, because that's like, that, that should be like the default way, because why would you um, 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 actually um, add a, a specific data type to something, you add another thing and it's not showing an error, it should show an error. Control they try to assign something try to assign a different value to um to as, as props to the um yeah, I mean, assign, like, like no just leave the default leave the default leave the default then okay let's see if it shows an error Useless constructor, no useless constructor. Useless constructor, because there is no state in constructor, so it's returning that. Mm -hmm. I will try to attend something from there is our items. Close the tangent and It's not returning anything. Here you can see that, Elliot. Okay, hey. Elliot, you can see what. In so this is where you are. Prop string supply to items expected number. Oh, this is like this is this should be this way. You have the React Dev yeah. two ex extension. Yeah. Um, click Here on it's passed out. Think here. Do you have the React Dev2 extension on your go on your on yeah. your browser? Yeah, yeah, I have I think. But I need to enable it. I have disabled it. Yeah. There's a way you need to, you should enable it uh, a particular way. Yeah, yeah. Is there action? It is gonna uh, go to extensions. Hey, now we have oh, yeah. this here, this is this switch. This is 
No, you would check. Click on that arrow, the double arrow beside audit. 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 That's where you are So you can check, you can view your components from there and see how they are Here, rendered and all. The value of exactly. Props value. And if you can't have to control, you can see this. That the value is value not prop. The other type is not what you assign. So, that's the one of them. One more thing is we can write state here, something like this dot. Hello? Guys, I need to get dressed though. So I guess I'll, I'll, be, I'll be going now. Okay. Yeah. All right. See you in a minute. Elliot? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you wanna go or have some time? Yeah, I'm getting very sleepy. Okay. Have you observed that uh, error in that if you pass something other than that number? Show me. Here in the console. Okay. I'll show that code once and then- Failed prop type, yeah. Yeah, here we have assigned the prop type as number to quantity. Mm -hmm right then mm -hmm. i pass the value string here i'm passing this this is a prop we are passing some value to mm -hmm. items component so i'm passing string here if you come back to our react console in our browser console there are react giving a warning that invalid prop quantity mm -hmm. of type string apply to items expected number it's showing that warning here in our console mm -hmm. So if we make it into some number, I think to pass the number we need to use this. Oh sorry. Now it clears that. I got it. One. Mm -hmm. And one more thing I want to show you here. This items is functional component because there is no class here. If you use class in your component, then we call it as state comp state pool or class component. This this is arrow function items. We are writing an arrow function. Mm -hmm. This is a functional component. So for functional components, we can't define state. If you want to declare some state in a component, you must use class for that. Here, this is another component. Here we have class. So we can define state here. And Whatever values we define here is internal to this app component only. We can't. But props is coming from its parent component. Something like if you have in here in the items component, we have props. But these props are coming from here in this render this items component. Coming from here. Mm -hmm. So it's coming from its parent component. The prop is coming from this app items here. But the state is internal to this component only. And if you want to pass this state value to that items component, we can do that like this here. Sorry. This dot state dot uh, okay. So, so the value will be zero here, and if I change the state into some hundred, some thousand, yeah. Now you can see the thousand here. Yeah. So if we can pass the state as a value to prop from one component to other, and if this value changes, the items component will automatically updates that value. Yeah. 
So that makes it pretty dynamic. Yeah, it's like a dynamic, right? Very dynamic. Yes. Okay. And state is internal to that particular component. Props will come from other component, from where we render that component. We are rendering the items component here and we are passing that prop values from here. Okay. And the state is, we define the state inside constructor in, within that component. But in recent version of React, the 16.8, I think, they have introduced one concept called hooks. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't Using have to hooks, do, you, can, you don't need the class. You don't we need can the write uh, state class. The, yeah. Uh, yeah. We can write state in co functional component also. So it is a look cleaner way. Mm -hmm. So there is no need to be two types of components. We can write all functional components. There is no need to be functional and class components. So the code looks a bit cleaner and neat. Okay. Just to learn the concept, we are going through this class. We can skip this class and directly use that hooks also to use that state. Yeah. Yeah, that's like only a month old though, right? Like a couple months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think one month or like that. Yeah. Hmm. Just read the documentation also when you have some free time from that introduction part. You will understand it. the documentation yeah, is very I need simple. To, I need to do more reading. Yeah. This this is very clear. But they have some good examples and the very easy to read React yeah. docs. Right now, I need to get some sleep. I'm like falling asleep on okay. you. Okay. So. Okay, I'll leave. Bye. Just, but, um, I'll show that React Docs page and I'll, we will end up this. Just read this main concepts from Hello World to this thinking in React, these two well things. Yeah. I need They're to. Very simple and a small blog post, something like the very small. That's it. Is it? And once you come here in the fifth one, you will understand what is state and props. Yeah, read I read this. I read section. this uh, section. Uh, okay. I think uh, either yesterday yeah, or two. Once ago, again, I read this. Go through it once again. Then you just now you came to know about the state and all those things. Just go through once again. You will understand that. Yeah. Here you can see that converting a function to class. Mm -hmm. In class, we have that render, and in the functional component, there is no render method. We just return the JSX from return statement. For, but in class, we write render method. Inside render, we'll return. Mm -hmm. If you observe the change, here we have render for class component. But for functional component, there will be no render method. We directly write return. All right, Trikant, I'm. I'm falling asleep. Okay. Okay, I, bye. Eric. I'm having trouble keeping my eyelids up. <laughs> okay. What is the time exactly then? Uh one thirty AM. Oh god. So I have to wake up again to get into that JavaScript class, right? Yeah, I'll get up in the morning then. Okay. But uh, bye bye. All right. Happy coding everybody. Thanks for uh, dropping in and um We'll continue with React, but uh, do uh, leave us a, a comment in the in the video. But uh, um, go through these uh, the React JS org documentation and um, yeah, just try to drop some nuggets about about uh, React there. But uh, anyhow, uh, we'll uh, catch you another time. Thanks for stopping by.